Joining us now, Republic, Republican Congressman from South Carolina, Ralph Norman. Congressman, welcome. I know that you and your constituents are dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Helene this morning. How's your community, how are your folks holding up under this? Well, we got a crisis in certain parts, Chris, the western part to be exact. I got a call early this morning in one of the counties in Buncom County where people are dying. Uh, stores are being looted. We're trying to get both governors, Cooper and McMaster, to sign off on the MOU to, to get help. But we probably have over a million people uh, in the western side of South Carolina that have been devastated. And it's a, it's a uh, it's an urgent call for help. And hopefully we'll get groups there. And I'm from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Our police and, and other sheriff is getting involved because people's lives are, are being lost. Okay, well, you, we will keep you all in our prayers and good wishes. Uh, now, back to politics. Uh, you just heard Governor Lamont talk about immigration, uh, and you heard a reference to the former president's successful efforts to thwart the border security measure in the Senate. You oppose that bill, uh, and you did it, uh, I, I'd say, on principled reasons, for your own reasons. Uh, but isn't there something to the argument that Democrats tried, but Republicans refused to make a deal on this? Chris is, and I listen to Governor Lamont, it's absolutely a disgrace on what he said. It's just not true. Uh, let's take the so-called agreement, bipartisan, that uh, was worked on. That let, as an example, 15,000 per day come in. Uh, we've already got 15 million. If this administration wanted to do anything about it, they would have done something day one, but they've done just the opposite. So what he said is just not true. That, uh, that agreement was nothing but to give the Democrats cover. When you still let 15,000 per day that they had the right to do, that was in the, in the agreement. And the devil is in the details on any of this, as you know. So it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't hold water. Look at the deaths that have happened from the illegals. And uh, uh, she's not going to do anything about it. She was the border czar. And what did she do the three, four, four and a half year, three and a half years that she's been in office? Absolutely nothing. Okay, if the criticism of Kamala Harris, as you say, is that her words don't match her deeds on immigration, the criticism of the former president is that his words are taking us to a pretty dark place on this issue. Trump, Senator Vance, and campaign allies have demonized legal immigrants in places like Springfield, Ohio, and Charleroi, Pennsylvania, going from accusing them of eating pets to at least one Trump insider now accusing them of ritual sacrifice. Doesn't talk like this turn off voters who otherwise might be sympathetic to the Republican policies and point of view that you just laid out there? No. Here, well, if the, you're talking about rhetoric, the Democrats saying that Donald Trump would be a threat to democracy, that's not incendiary. No, Donald, Donald Trump's record speaks for itself. He did. He had a strict policy on, uh, on the border, and it's this administration that I don't think anybody can deny the numbers that are here. Look on your street in anywhere in America. We're all border states now, uh, to the to the Mexican border and to the Canadian border. And no, the the record of Donald Trump is being strict on immigration, and he would have never let the 15 million in. And when he becomes president, he's going to de deport them which is the right course of action. So his record speaks for itself, and the record for the Democrats on what the Biden administration, Harris administration has done speaks for itself. Okay, so you said the rhetoric, uh, that the Democrats have negative rhetoric toward Trump, and Donald Trump has said that that's why he, there have been two assassination attempts uh, on him at least. But Donald Trump routinely calls Kamala Harris a fascist and says that if she's elected, it'll be the end of America. Isn't that about the same thing? Well, again, the end of our constitutional republic uh, will be at the end if, com if Zara Harris is elected. She's the one that's talking about uh, raising taxes. And, and this, this economic plan, where has it been for the last four years? Americans are not that stupid. They're feeling it in their pocketbook. The plan that this, the, the Biden, the Harris will have will be to take your money, uh, raise taxes on unrealized gain, which is stupidity. And uh, the record, again, for the economy, people know it. Ask them what they're paying less for. Uh, and the Trump administration, and, you know, words really don't matter. I ask this. It's one simple question for the American people. Are you better off uh, under the Trump years or are you better off under the Biden years? It's very clear. Thanks for watching.
Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.